Hi there, this is Eric for Otoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with cameras using Octane 308 for Maya. So just some camera basics to get you started. Uh, later on, we'll go a little bit more in depth in uh, the various things you can do with Octane cameras. But let's just get started with some basics. So I'm using the Space Cantina Interior 01 scene. And uh, just looking through the perspective camera here, I have a few cameras set up in the scene, but let's start from scratch with a brand new camera. So let's set the renderer to viewport 2.0 for a moment. So to add a camera to the scene, you can either go to the Octane render shelf and click on the camera icon right here. You can go to the Octane menu and choose Octane camera, or you can just use the standard way of creating a camera, which would be create cameras and you can use any of these camera types. You don't necessarily need to use stereo camera or multi-stereo rig because Octane has its own stereoscopic rendering attributes. So you can ignore these two, but you could create any of these types of cameras if you'd like. So let's just create a camera and I'm gonna name it Octane Camera, just so we can keep our camera straight. And then I'll go to the panels menu and choose perspective, Octane Camera so I can look through that camera and let's zoom out and find a nice shot of the bar. It's our little friend sharing a drink. I like to turn on the resolution gate so I can easily frame the shot, so I'll turn that on. To adjust the actual resolution, you just go into the render settings, go to the common tab, just like you would for any type of Maya scene, and you can use the settings under image size to change the resolution. Anytime you want to adjust the settings for the camera that you're looking through, you can click on this little icon right here, and that will load the settings in the attribute editor. So I'm going to go to the shape tab for Octane camera shape. I go up here to the top. Most of these settings that you see right here are not going to apply. The settings that you want to use to adjust the camera are found in the Octane section, with just a few exceptions. So these override a lot of these other settings up here. If you want to change the focal length, you can still do that using the focal length slider here in the camera attributes. So I'll set this to 60 just for the sake of argument and frame our two guys here. And then we can go down to the octane section. So for this particular video, I just want to focus on some of the basic settings. So the main one would be octane camera type. This menu allows you to choose from thin lens or like a standard movie camera to panoramic for creating spherical renderings or for rendering for virtual reality. Then we have baking and OSL, and we'll cover these in later lessons. Let's just stick to thin lens for the moment. And I'm gonna set my renderer back to Octane Render so we can see what it looks like with the lighting. And some of the settings that I wanna point out is the aperture. This controls the depth of field blurring if you set this to zero, you'll see the entire image will be in focus as it renders. If you want to create the look of depth of field blurring, you can move this up. Higher settings will create more blurring. So if I set this to the highest setting of 100. You can see that the uh, items that are closer to the camera are out of focus and the items farther away from the camera are in focus. Let's say we want to change that. We can go down here to the depth of field settings uh, if I want to numerically adjust the region that is in focus, I can use the slider, but remember to turn off autofocus because autofocus is going to override these settings. So let's turn that off and I'm going to set this down to say 15 and that gets the robot more in focus. Now if you really want to have exaggerated depth of field to create something like a macro shot, you may need to change the scale of the scene. One way to do that, or one way to cheat that, is to go into the Octane Render tab, and under Additional, you'll see this Scale 1 Unit equals X Meters. If I set this down to 1, and uh, let's adjust that aperture again, you can see I'm going to get really exaggerated depth of field blurring. Ideally, you kind of want to use the default settings for this and actually adjust the overall scene the overall scale of your scene itself because otherwise you start to get into conflicts where the scene scale and the octane settings are out of sync with the scene scale of your actual scene so sometimes that can cause issues but in a pinch this technique will work so let's take a quick look at working with spherical cameras so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
zoom out here so we can see more of the scene itself. And let's set that aperture back down to zero. And I'm going to go into the resolution settings. I'm just going to kind of pick some arbitrary numbers. Uh, so let's set the width to 2048. And I'm going to set my octane camera type to panoramic. The default setting for the panoramic type is spherical. So you can change that using this menu down here. So I could set this to cylindrical or a cube map. And I have a various numbers of presets here for uh, cube map rendering. Let's set this back to spherical. If you want to render out stereoscopic renderings for virtual reality, you can use these options down here. Stereo output is disabled by default. But if I open this menu, you can see there's a number of presets. So I could do each eye individually, left or right. Or I could do side by side. So this is going to render one image that has both eyes in it. I could do anaglyph so that I could use colors to kind of create the stereoscopic effect. Or I could use over under. And then there are a number of settings here that will allow you to fine tune how the stereoscopic rendering is created. We also have depth of field settings for the stereo cameras as well. So let's set this back to thin lens. And of course you can create stereo images that are not spherically mapped as well. So let's set the stereo output to disabled. And then we're back to kind of our standard rendering. And then we can take a look at our friends at the bar. So the last thing I want to point out is how to adjust things like the exposure and the color response of the render. You would do that by creating an imager node. So if I go into the render settings here, under the Octane Render tab, uh, down here under Render Settings, you could see that there's a menu for imager. So if I choose Imager, Create New, and then click this arrow, it will open up in the Attribute Editor. And I can change things like the color response, and I can use various presets or change it or turn it off altogether and then adjust the gamma. We also have a way now to link to uh, custom lookup tables. And then we have things such as vignetting, saturation, hot pixel removal. The lower this value is, the more the hot pixels will be removed from the render. Be careful if you make this too low, your render will start to appear kind of soft. And then, of course, we also have exposure here at the top. So if I want to, say, increase the exposure or adjust the gamma, I can use these sliders here. So that allows you to fine tune the overall look of the render. So I hope this gets you up and running with Octane cameras. There's more to explore, which we'll take a look at in future lessons. Uh, but thanks again for watching.